A pleasant morning to all invited guests, principal, teachers, students, parents, and other attendees. I am Dr. Kim Newton-James, Technical Officer for Chemical and Solid Waste Management at the Environmental Health and Sustainable Development Department, CAFA, which is located in St. Lucia. I'm also the coordinator of this student activity, and I will be your moderator for this session. It is my pleasure to welcome you to the International Lead Poisoning Prevention Week student webinar entitled Lead Paint Study in St. Lucia. This year, the International Lead Poisoning Prevention Week is being commemorated from October the 25th to the 31st. And so far, it has been a week full of awareness. And one of the messages, the key messages I might add, is that lead paint is a major source of poisoning among children. Countries all over the world are doing their part to, be, to bring awareness to this issue and to take action to ban or to put legal controls in place to prevent lead in paint. It is important for our children to do their part increasing, in increasing awareness and advocacy on the lead paint poisoning issue. I am confident that you will leave here, you will leave here, leave this session inspired and motivated to take action. I, now, I will now go through a few housekeeping matters. All attendee videos and microphones will remain off throughout the duration of this webinar. The webinar will be in three parts, remarks followed by the student presentation, and finally, the answer and question session. We ask that all questions be placed in the chat. These will be answered by the student panelists during the answer question session. At this point, I would now like to introduce Mr. Bradshaw Isaac, the officer in charge of the Sustainability, Sustainability Development Department of CAFA here in St. Lucia. He is gonna give us a few opening remarks. So I turn you over to Mr. Isaacs. A pleasant good morning to you all. On behalf of our executive director of the Caribbean Public Health Agency, Dr. Joy St. John, and our director of the Surveillance Disease Prevention and Control Department, Dr. Lisa Indar, and the team from the Environmental Health and Sustainable Development Department, I welcome you to this International Lead Poisoning Prevention Week student webinar, the lead paint study in St. Lucia. International Lead Poisoning Prevention Week is recognized October 25th to 31st, and the aim is to draw attention to the health impact of lead exposure, highlight efforts by country and partners to prevent childhood lead exposure and accelerate efforts to phase out the use of lead paint, of lead in paint. This year focus is to accelerate progress towards global phase out of lead paint through regulatory and legal matters. CAFA is pleased to offer support to this worthy cause in partnership with international, regional, and national agencies. We are especially pleased to partner with the Dame Paulette Louise Primary School to make this initiative and the activity of this day a success. I would like to say a special thank you to the principal, the teachers, the students, and their parents for the support and dedication to this cause, despite the many challenges being offered by the COVID-19 
pandemic in St. Lucia at this time. It is said in a biblical term that a child shall lead us. And so today we find it quite fitting that three students will share the findings of research conducted with their classmates and hereby lend a voice towards the fight against lead poisoning prevention. The impact of lead poisoning on health is well researched and children are recognized as a vulnerable group. Exposure to lead can seriously harm child's health, including damage to brain and nervous system, slowed growth and development, learning and behavioral problems, and hearing and speech problems. No safe lead level in children has been identified. However, we all acknowledge that lead poisoning can be prevented and we all have a part to play. With that said, I use this opportunity to once again applaud the organization, the organizers, the partners that conceptualize this initiative and today's activity and as bring it to fruition. I wish for a successful webinar and one that will have far reaching effect. In closing, I'd like to mention, I'd like to make mention of an ebook that was also developed as part of the activities in recognition of this year. The ebook, however, is posted on the CAFA's website and it is available for your viewing. We invite you to look at this ebook and be informed. I thank you again for your participation and I hope for a good webinar. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Mr. Isaac. I really agree with what you said in terms of the children our, are our future. And that brings to mind this sound, this popular sound. The children are our future and we need to let them lead the way. We also need to let them lend their voices to these important issues that affects them. I now welcome one of our guests, Mrs. Vera Barantes who works as the regional consultant for the United Nations Environment Program and the Pan American Health Organization. She, she currently supports activities in Latin America and the Caribbean under the component on lead paint regulations of the JEF project on best practices on SICOM emerging issues. Today, Ms. Barantes will give us some insight into International Lead Poisoning Prevention Week and its importance in the global response to lead poisoning. I now turn you over to Ms. Barantes. Thank you very much. Uh, good morning uh, to everyone. And thank you very much for having me here uh, and for inviting me to this uh, important event. Uh, it is a pleasure to be here on behalf of the United Nations Environment Program and the Pan American Health Organization. Um, as it has been said here, uh, lead is, is a toxic, is a toxic that is under the international uh, action uh, to prevent any kind of poisoning that can come from this substance. Can I have the next slide, please? Lead is toxic uh, and damages many organs uh, uh, and it is an important, uh, it has important impacts in human health. It can damage the brain, kidneys, liver, blood, reproductive system. And the most important aspect is that young children are, are the most vulnerable since they are in, the, in their development stages their metabolism and the amounts of lead that they can absorb are very important and this causes uh, very important impacts in their health. 
and it can uh, damage their nervous system and have cognitive impacts uh, for them. In pregnant women, this is also a problem. It affects the developing fetus. The effects of the lead can be uh, can pass from the mother to the fetus. And this is also a very uh, important concern at the global level. And this is how we have this International Lead Poisoning Prevention Week. This is the eighth uh, week that we celebrate. Um, it's an important event where different stakeholders come together and discuss these issues about lead poisoning and how to prevent them. And it's very important what it has been said uh, now by, by previous uh, panelists about now the importance and the action, the global action is focused on lead paint. As you may recall, uh, lead uh, can, there are several sources of lead. It can be come from plumbery, it can, be, it can come from industrial activities, certain industrial activities. Uh, as you may recall, lead gasoline, lead fuels were uh, at some point a problem, and now it's almost uh, eliminated everywhere, the gasolines with lead. So now the global action focuses to lead paint. Uh, it has been found that it's a very important source, uh, a very important source for children uh, because of the different um, buildings and areas that can be uh, covered with this kind of paint. And therefore, um, the Global Alliance to Eliminate Lead Paint was, cre was created. Uh, it's basically an alliance of different organizations, international organizations, uh, countries, industry, to, to bring uh, all the global action together to eliminate this kind of paint or to eliminate the use of lead in paints. Um, it's very important that now the Global Alliance to Eliminate Lead Paint is very active. Uh, they have now a GEF project, a very large GEF project that has the objective to have 40 countries at least for 2021 uh, with lead paint laws. Uh, it has been found that there's uh, the, the most effective way to eliminate lead paints is to have regulations about these paints and to stop um, uh, the import of this kind of paint, the production, and the way to achieve this is through these regulations. So this GEF project that the Global Alliance to Eliminate Lead Paint is implementing at the moment, it has the objective in 2021 to have a very uh, high number of countries having this kind of regulations. And uh, in this regard, I congratulate very much and from my colleagues as well, they are very interested to know about the study that you have now in San Lucia, because this is a very important step to have the baseline information of what is the market of lead paints in a country is the most important step to uh, move towards action. So I congratulate very much these efforts and I look very much forward to hearing of what was your experience and your results. Thank you very much. Great, thank you, Ms. Barantes. So this gives us all an insight into the sort of global action and into the importance of the lead paint issue and how it is being tackled on a global level. Finally, I now invite our guest from the St. Lucia Bureau of Standards, represented by Ms. Zamala Haynes Joseph, head of the Department of the Standards Development at the Bureau. Mrs. Haynes enjoys standards work and thinks standards should be the building block in our business and operations, and even in life. Her personal mantra is that standards are ingrained in her DNA. Mrs. Haynes will give us an update on the current status of lead paint standards in the CARICOM region and St. Lucia. So I welcome Mrs. Haynes Joseph. Thank you very much, Dr. Newton James. Um, on behalf of the Senusha Bureau of Standards, of course, we want to extend congratulations to CAFA and the Dame Paulette Louisi Primary School 
on the work you've been doing as you celebrate or commemorate Lead Poisoning Prevention Week and raising awareness in terms of the presence of lead in paint in St. Lucia. The St. Lucia Bureau of Standards, of course, is committed as per our mandate to developing standards and um, do we carrying out conformity assessment work that promotes protection of the environment as well as protection um, or promotion of health and safety of our people here in St. Lucia. And um, we do have quite a bit of work we've, been, we've done from 1992 to present that focuses on the um, lead in, in paint or provides some amount of requirements of, for lead in paint. I have to indicate that standards by nature are voluntary and we work with our parent ministry where the minister may declare a standard mandatory which would require um, active monitoring legislation and, and um, have fines attached if one is found to bring breach of the standard. And currently, none of the standards I'm going to highlight now have that status, but having been established as a national standard, it is available for use by manufacturers and as well consumers or users of the standard. In St. Lucia, we do have national standards existing that, and these have been there from 1992. And these standards are specific to methods of tests for paints and surface coatings. We have the SLNS 20, which covers interior and exterior emulsion type um, flat paint and specification for paint interior and exterior oil modified alkyd. These standards are, of course, up for review and revision, recognizing that it has been there from 1992. And we are working with the CARICOM Regional Organization for Standards and Quality, or CROSSQ, to take a regional approach towards the updating, revision, and review of these national standards. As such, when the CARICOM standards work is completed at a regional level, our national standards will be updated using the CARICOM specifications. And we will ensure through that, that action that the standards used and applied here in St. Lucia is equivalent or harmonized with standards used and applied across the CARICOM region. And that of course is 15 member states. We have with CARICOM work being done on waterborne coating specification, work being done on paints, and that one will cover solvent borne coatings, or what we commonly refer to as oil paint. And we have just recently concluded work on methods of tests for paint and surface coatings. And there is a CARICOM specification that specifically speaks to the limit of lead in paint. Now, that standard, um, when we look at some of the new work and keeping with technology and best practice, especially requirements and recommendations coming out of the World Health Organization, we would see that it is a bit outdated. So in 1992, the national standard that spoke to oil modified alkyds did in fact have a requirement or a maximum level for lead in paint, and that was um, at 0.5% on a mass, um, a mass basis, or that would equate to 5,000 ppm. We see in 1995 with the CARICOM standard that is specific to the limit of lead content in paint, that requirement was brought to 0.06% by weight or mass, and that equates to 600 ppm. We're now moving to updating the, the standards and the revised or the updated versions will have, um, once it is concluded, requirements for lead content in paint, again by weight or mass, of 0.009% maximum and that would represent 90 ppm. So we see that from 1992 to 2000, 2020 
or 2021, because that is when this, these standards is anticipated to be adopted, we will move from a 5,000 maximum PPM to a 90 PPM um, um, limit for lead in paint. We recognize that in other jurisdictions, the um, limits of lead in paint is part of regulations. And I think through work that the students are doing, this would supply adequate justification to encourage our own legislative um, bodies, and, and of course, through the legislative framework that exists here in St. Lucia, to consider having these standards declared mandatory, and we can have established in legislation, and not just as part of the national standards, the maximum limits of lead in paint to be 90 ppm. So I encourage you to share the, the, the success of, of the study, inform and let us drive the, the change that we would like to see as we aim to um, keep our focus on protection of consumers, particularly children and exposure of lead in paint. I did not mention, but before I conclude, I just want to indicate that we also have standards that speak to safety of toys. And in those standards, it is very clear what the residual amount of lead should be in toys or paint used for toys. So there is some amount of protection as it pertains to the toys used for children, but of course, we know paint is all around us and we would like to see that type of um, requirement carried through in the domestic use of paints here in St. Lucia. So thank you once again for giving us the opportunity to present a brief on what we have done and what we are doing and aim to do as we contribute to the um, um, lead, well, lead poisoning awareness and of course limiting the amount of lead in paint thank you great thank you so much mrs heinz joseph and uh, very interesting remarks because we see that yes we have a lot of standards related to paint and lead in paint but we need to move away from voluntary standards when it relates to these sorts of paint. And we need to actually put in the legislation that would make it mandatory for manufacturers, importers, retailers to use or put paints on the market that are lead free or that have limits according to that recommended by the Lead Paint Alliance of 90 parts per million. With that, I will now dive, or we will now dive into our presentations. I would like to introduce our three student presenters from grade six of the Dame Paulette Louise Primary School. Our first presenter is Jarrell William. His hobby is drawing and he likes science and he hopes to become a marine biologist one day. Our second presenter is Shanice Says. Her hobbies are singing and dancing. Shanice likes spending time with her family, friends, and she has big plans for her future. And finally, we have Mateo Samuel. His hobby, hobbies are playing football and playing outside. And he, of course, is happy to be part of this activity. With that, I will turn you over into the capable hands of our student presenters. Good day, everyone. Today, I am going to be presenting our study on lead in paint done in St. Lucia. Today's presentation will consist of a background, our objectives, methods we employ to collect this data, our results, discussion, conclusions, recommendations, future research and actions, as well as acknowledgements. To start off, let's review some of the terms that will be used in this presentation today. Lead, a naturally occurring toxic metal found in the Earth's crust, and its uses include lead acid batteries, paints, solder, ammunition, ceramic, 
jewelry, toys, and cosmetics. Paint. This focuses on oil-based paints, which include bionic varnishes, lacquers, stains, enamels, glazes, primers, and other coatings. Lead paint. Paint to which one or more lead compounds have been added for specific properties. Lead poisoning. It refers to excessive human exposure to lead. Safety data sheet, SDS, or material safety data sheet, MSDS, provides information on hazardous chemicals, properties, health and environmental health hazards, protective measures, etc., from the manufacturer. Lead. Lead is used in paint because it causes the paint to dry faster, gives better colors, and also prevents corrosion. Lead is mainly added to some solvent-based paints. Although manufacturers may not intentionally add lead, small amounts may be present in the raw materials. There are lead-free paints on the market. Paint is a major source of exposure to lead. There is no safe level of lead exposure. Lead exposure can occur when paint decays or when removing paint from walls. Exposure occurs through ingestion of contaminated soil or dust, inhalation of contaminated particles. Lead has many toxic effects to many body systems, such as the nervous system and digestive systems. Who is most at risk? Young children. Their brain and nervous system are still developing. They also absorb more lead for their size, about four to five times more than adults. Due to this, children also experience many adverse health effects, which include reduced intelligence quotient, IQ, reduced attention span, and behavior problems. Women are also at risk if exposed to lead. Lead stored in the body can be reduced during pregnancy, breastfeeding, and menopause. It is dangerous to the baby as it causes reduced fetal growth, slow birth weight, and preterm birth. Our aims are to increase awareness of the harmful effects of lead in paints, to encourage the use of safer chemicals in manufacturing, and to encourage the use of enforceable standards to control lead levels in paint. From our aims, we are able to identify two main objectives, to describe the situation of lead paint in St. Lucia, and to make recommendations based on the results. My colleague, Mateo, will now take you through our methods employed Good, good morning, I am Matteo Samuel, and I'll be taking you through the methods. Part one, participating in a CAPA present, um, a presentation held by CAPA, which explains lead and the, and the issues related to lead. To lead, as well as participating in International Lead Poisoning Prevention Week. Also participating in a presentation held by the St. Lucia Bureau of Standards um, to recognize the importance of standards and to protect, our, um, to protect our health and the environment from lead. Part two, the steps we did to organize this presentation. Step one, data collection. In, informal interviews, examine paint labels and internet research. Step two, we put all our information together in a table. Step three, data analysis. Look for patterns in the data so we could get ready for our last step, step four, draw conclusions. We made recommendations and put all our information together. Now I will take you over to Shanice Seals to show our results. Good morning, I am Shanice Sills, and today I will show you the results of our research. The results. 
our we have placed our parent brands into three categories. Our first category is local. It is manufactured locally in St. Lucia. Our second category is regional, meaning it was manufactured in the Caribbean region, in the countries of Barbados, Dominica, Grenada, Guyana, and Trinidad and Tobago. Our last category is international, meaning manufactured outside of the Caribbean region in countries like Brazil, Canada, China, and the USA. This pie chart shows the percentage by pair brands categories identified in the study out of 19 brands. 5% of brands were manufactured locally, while 21% of brands were manufactured regionally, and 74% of brands were manufactured internationally. This pie chart shows the percentage of brands with lead content on the labels out of 19. 7% of brands had labels which contain information on lead, while 93% of brands did not contain any information on lead. This pie chart shows a percentage of brands with the SDS available on the website. SDS also stands for safety data sheets. 23% of brands had no SDS available on the website while 77% of brands had the SDS on the website. The websites where the SDS were not found proved difficult to navigate. None of the SDS examined contained specific information about the lead content. One regional brand had a line of paint labeled as lead free. None of the international brands examined were labeled lead free. 16% of the brands used in St. Lucia contain kaolin, talc, or organoclave as a raw material. One brand with a lead-free label employed the use of metal dryers. The discussion. Labeling as lead-free may be based on the guidelines or standards used in the country of manufacture. Countries have different limits on total lead concentration in paints as shown in the next slide. The countries with limits on total lead concentration, 90 parts per million, 100 parts per million, 600 parts per million, and 1,000 parts per million or higher. This pie chart shows the percentage of countries by lead concentration limit. 30.3% of countries had 90 parts per million. 9.1% of countries had 100 parts per million. And 42.4% of countries had 600 parts per million. And 18.2% of countries had 1,000 parts per million or higher. Three Caribbean countries had 600 parts per million as a lead limit for household paints. They are Dominica, Guyana, and Trinidad and Tobago. 11 countries in Latin America and the Caribbean had lead paint laws, while whopping 22 countries had no binding limits. The countries in North America both had 90 parts per million as a lead limit for paints. Metallic dryers are added to paints to help them dry quicker when applied. Lead is an example of such a metal. The SDS did not list the type of metal used. The metal dryers found in the SDS was less than 2% wet weight. The Lead Paint Alliance recommends a limit of 90 parts per million, 0.009% of total lead. Clay soils, kaolin, and talc are raw materials used for paints, which may be contaminated with lead. The lead content of these raw materials 
were not specifically mentioned in the SDS. Local and regional brands have green certification for being environmentally friendly, specifically related to VOCs but not lead. The conclusion. There is uncertainty concerning the lead content in oil-based paints on the St. Lucian market. There is a need to develop national enforceable standards to set maximum limits for lead in paints or laws to prohibit the use, import, and sale of the lead paints. Thank you. And I now hand you over to Matteo. Hello, I would be I will be taking you through the recommendations. The consumers be informed about the adverse health effects of lead. Be a discriminated consumer and examine the labels carefully and visit the brand websites. Manufacturers ensure that raw materials are lead free or have low content of lead. Prohibit the use of lead compounds in paint or set a maximum limit for lead through enforceable standards. Manufacturers should include information about the lead content of the raw materials used. Display lead-free messages on paint labels. Our, our further research, our future research and actions. Conduct analysis on paint samples marketed in St. Lucia. Advocate for development of laws to make national standards enforceable and to prohibit the use of lead compounds in paint. Now I take you over to Jarrell. The limitations of our study, limited scope. The study only covered paints in the market in Castries and the surrounding areas. SDS or MSDS sheets could not be located online for more information on products. Information from some retailers were limited. So we would like to acknowledge these people. Our student researchers, Vianney Plummer, Baby Philip, Ruben Reynolds, Johnny Pierre-Louis, Ellie St. Green St. Rose, Alisa Wey, Jamari Seri, and Sage Savi. We would also like to acknowledge these teachers, Ms. Karen Malakan, Mrs. Valerie Fletcher, and Mr. John Ross Louis. We have been your presenters, Shanice Sills, Mateo Samuel, and myself, Gerald William. Thank you everyone for listening. Do you have any questions? Okay, thank you so much. Excellent job. And I just want to congratulate, this, congratulate the students again for their wonderful presentation and uh, keeping us aware and informed of the situation in St. Lucia when it relates to lead in paint. So now we move on to the question and answer session. So we will take your, your questions or we'll actually hand them over to the students so they can answer your questions. So we're just gonna check in the chat to see if there are any questions. Okay, so I'm getting that we have a lot of commendations for the students on the good job that they have done this morning. So yes, and I, as I, again, I will echo that excellent work. And they sacrificed a lot, even in this, these times of COVID when they were not at school and basically everything was done with them online. So amazing work, students. Kim? Yes. There is one question in the chat. Okay. Thank you. I think I'm looking at it. Okay, so. Okay, so we have, it's more of a more or less a statement. And this is from our only manufacturer on the island. And uh, um, he is pointing out that uh, we are the only manufacturers on the island and would like to know that our paints are manufactured. Um, they are lead free. They don't have lead. That is excellent. Excellent. 
even if you have questions um, for our invited guests, speakers, um, you can ask as well. There is one came in the chat. In the chat, hold Not on. in the question and answer segment, but in the chat. Okay, hold on. You mentioned lead paint. Do you yes. know if there are many local manufacturers of paint? Okay, so that was the question. Thanks, Shima. You mentioned lead local paint. Do you know if there are many local manufacturers? And we just sort of answered that question. There's one local manufacturer, and that manufacturer just told us that there's no lead in the paint that they do manufacture. Okay, so more congratulations for the students on a job well done. Great delivery students. I'll just read through the comments while you think. And if there are no further questions, we'll close in a bit. Excellent speakers, excellent study and presentation. So if you have any questions or any of our panelists want to say a few words, we can have them say a few words. Okay, so all right. Good, good, good. So with that, I would close the question and answer session. But if you still have questions, please, please feel free to send us your questions and we will answer them for you. There is one more question, Kim, before you go. Okay, one more question before we leave. Hold on. Are okay. there any plans to lobby for better labeling of pins? Okay, so the question is, are there any plans to lobby for better labeling of paints? So I think, um, anybody wants to answer that? Okay, so Matteo is gonna attempt to answer this question. Thank you, Matteo. The question is, are there any plans to lobby for better labeling of paints? Right now, since we are trying to and lead and paint, or at least uh, prohibit the use of it. We have, I don't think we have done anything about that yet, but it's a good question to ask, but I don't really know what, um, what you are planning to do next, but it is a good question to ask. So thank you for your question. Okay, great, thank you. So yes, the intention is to start lobbying our ministry, the relevant ministry, the relevant ministers, to start looking into some enforceable standards. As Mrs. Haynes said, we do have a lot of standards, but the problem is we need to get legislation to make, make them mandatory and do not only depend on you know, voluntary, voluntary actions. And not only looking at the paints manufactured in, in St. Lucia, but we also have to look at those that are imported, those that are sold from outside the region and outside those that come in internationally, internationally. So yes, there will be a move to lobby our relevant stakeholders. And CAFA is definitely going to be a part of that. And yes, the students will be involved every step of the way as a continuation to this project. Activity. Kim? Yes. If I may just add to that as, as well, um, I, I'm actually happy to indicate that CAFA is on our chemicals technical committee that um, oversees the development of, of the revision or the work on, on standards for paint. Um, we also have from the industry our local manufacturer serving on our national committee. And these individuals also represent St. Lucia at the regional level where the work is being done by all persons involved from the 15 member states of CARICOM. So it's in a good position really to, I, I, I suppose lobby if you want to use that word, but really advocate that the standards can have a shift from being a voluntary standard to a mandatory standard. And I just also want to add here that even when a standard is voluntary, it does not mean that there's no legal implications. All it is, is 
it gives an opportunity for somebody to say, well, I do follow a standard, even if it's not the national standard, and the product is still okay to pass. But when you make it mandatory, what the country is saying is, we will not accept any other standard but the national standard. So that is really the difference. So a voluntary standard doesn't mean that you don't have to adhere or comply. Um, it just simply means that you have the opportunity to introduce um, other standards that exist. And it is about us in St. Lucia deciding where we want to set ourselves in terms of um, protection uh, and um, as well, we want to ensure we promote industrial efficiency. And if we agree that we want to set our national limits at 90 ppm, which is what's coming out of the revision, then we can decide that this is the only standard we follow and make it a mandatory standard. So there is a brilliant opportunity. There's a lot of work that can happen. Mm -hmm. And again, I'm advocating that I'm saying, be the change you want to, to see. And CAFA and even our local manufacturer are rightly poised to ensure we have a move towards better standards for paints in St. Lucia. Okay, thank you so much, Zamala Haynes, Joseph. Thank you for that and clarification as well. Thank you. Shema, do we have any other questions in the chat? I'm not seeing any more. Okay, so with that, I will close this session and we will wrap up. Great, so I would just like to, in closing, to give special acknowledgements and special thanks for the support and the wonderful experience that our stakeholders have afforded our students today. And that is Ms. Viva Barantes. We know that she's very busy with all the work that she's been doing. Ms. Zamala Heinz Joseph for being so willing to be a supporter and a stakeholder from the very beginning. Mrs. Etheline Leons, the principal of Dame Paulette Louise Second Primary School, sorry, um, who was so willing, you know, when we came to her with this proposal, even with the short time, you know, she willingly accepted and, you know, embraced it and thought it was a good idea and went with it. Um, also, the parents, okay, we couldn't have done it without the parents that provided a lot of the support and a lot of the time with the students and we even have parents assisting us with the photography. We're so grateful and thankful um, that you're here today as well. And you keep, we hope that you keep supporting your students in the excellent work that they did today and that they will be doing. Um, also, last but not least, I'd like to thank CAFA administration also for coming on board very quickly with uh, you know, the whole proposal and the ideas behind it and all the information that we have published online on the website, as well as the staff, the communication staff in Trinidad, which is where our headquarters is based. And that is Ms. Avril Isaac and her team also here working behind the scenes. We have Ms. Shirma Arthur, thank you very much. And also Mr. Bradshaw Isaac, who also um, loved the whole idea of incorporating the children into this activity. So thank you all again. And last but not least, I want to thank our parents that's with us here today, and also all the attendees and other special invited guests. So with that, um, we have come to the end of our session. And uh, I would like to have you just give us some feedback on the presentation um, a little more specific so we know what area we can improve on in terms of the study as well. Um, the link will be sent to you and it will also be placed in the chat. So thank you once again. And with that, I formally close this session. <laughs>